the houses they were burning and our young hearts they were yearning for someone something to bring a better day those heroes with grimy faces they stood up they took their places men and women stood together all the way and through ten thousand fires and twenty-two nights comrades united they fought the good fight out of the silence then came the light never again was the dignified cry there was so much power in ordinary hands it was the hour of the everyday man no more there's hope across europe We've enjoyed this afternoon listening to Marina Prentulis from Saritza. There's Podemos in Spain, there's De Linca in, in, in Germany, north of the border. An anti-austerity party, a party against Trident, st committed to stopping fracking, has been elected 56 seats out of 59 constituencies. Hope is possible. I think, I think what we have to understand in relation to Syriza is that Syriza created an opening for all of us. So it's not something that it is only about Greece. It's one first, even small, victory that we had. So Syriza makes an opening to think dif things differently, to stop austerity, to stop neoliberalism. And this is something that each one of us in every country in Europe has to take on and go on fighting and fighting back. We shouldn't give up on hope, but we can be inspired by the past in order to give us an identity for the future. We're not obsessed by history, but history can help shape the future. All those people that had suffered and served during the war wanted something to show for it. So the effort seemed to have been worth something. And a magnificent new society was created. And for many years, there, it survived. You know, there was this uh, feeling that it shouldn't be dismantled. It's only in the last 30 years it's become under more and more threat. I'm worried about what's going to happen in the next five years, though, of untrammeled Tories. You know, the bosses are back in power. And in these depths of defeat, following the 7th of May 2015, we need to find those moments of hope the inspiration for the future. There were unique circumstances which we do not have. The Soviet Union was a huge thing. The war was a huge thing. Um, yeah, we don't have... That's not what we've got anymore. So when you've got... Like, a whole generation that's been stuffed rather than a single class within a generation, then you know you might get somewhere. It has been quite depressing for a lot of us. But I also think that what we are trying to do, and this is very important, is that you have different groups of people who have different views maybe, but they are all having a common enemy. So through these gatherings we are trying to create the links and bring this together. So creating a movement, a much bigger movement, not only in Britain, but I hope from my side that it will be across Europe. You, we have to be together, we have to discuss, organize, but not losing the joy that it comes with collective action and struggle. We see full hooded, bearded Santas in every classroom in the country. People are saying to me when I meet them that it feels like the invasion of an alien force. Did we fight the Second World War for our whole traditional English department stores to be invaded by these hooded men in red, their faces obscured, muttering unintelligibly to our vulnerable children? Time to take a stand. Let me hear it. Ban the Santa outfit. To make politics fun. That's why people are so turned off by the Westminster bubble parties because they see these as a political class, a professionalised po politics. In 1945, politics was the property of the people. The creation of a welfare state, the nationalisation of the railways, that was a popular movement which began with the popular front against fascism and, and then transformed into the popular movement for a country of social justice, so different to the country and the government which we've just elected 48 hours ago. Well, what we have to do is bring unemployed people, people with no homes, people on no pay, people on zero hours contracts, all those people with us and build a better society, that's what it's all about. Uh, the, the message from in here is we've got to get together and we've got to organise and I think that's the spirit we've got to go forward on. I wanted to show you three things. It was about a time, that that time was 70 years ago, and that it was about a certain set of countries. I think it's absolutely right to celebrate the uh, victory in 1945. You know, the losses were staggering. We shouldn't forget about it. I'm not a pacifist. Some people have to be stopped. And we should celebrate the people who were able to do it. Harry, I, 
I'm not sure if there's anybody else here tonight who was there on the 8th of May 1945, but having read your book and knowing that you're 91, I hope that doesn't embarrass you. 92, sorry, that puts me right. Um, you tell me. Um, what was it like, the 8th of May 1945? What were you doing then? 70 years ago today, I was nursing perhaps the worst hangover of my life. <laughs> for the day's previous victory in Europe celebrations. So it was only natural and right that I voted for a political party that saw healthcare, housing and education as basic human rights for all its citizens and not just the well-to-do. Every meeting I go to is packed full of radicalized people who have not just want to change things but are no longer prepared to wait for some person in the suit to do it for them. From the Western Front to the Eastern Front, albeit they were commanded by officers, and in the end those officers and captains put back a lid on what happened, the Second World War was won by ordinary people. People in Scotland, even if they voted no in the referendum, will never forgive the Labour Party for getting into bed with the bedroom taxers and the welfare cappers. And that's the absolute truth of what's just happened. And let's not forget, there was people in the Labour Party who were very uncomfortable with Better Together as an alliance for no. And we saw that straight after, like the absolute collapse and chaos in the Scottish Labour Party, where their leader was then replaced with Jim Murphy, an arch Blairite, unapologetic supporter of the war in Iraq, and the SNP now led by a working class woman who represents everything that's against the Westminster Boys Club elite. And that's a huge part of explaining what's just happened in Scotland. And the fact that the SNP were able to provide a coherent anti-austerity narrative when Labour couldn't goes a long, long way in explaining their success. So yes, let's look at the past for inspiration. Let's think of all those who struggled before us, including our mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, ancestors before them as well. But let's have the same determination and courage they have and look forward the challenges that we all face today. It's going to be a long few years, no question. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. But we have to have renewed determination and courage. We have to fight harder than we've ever fought before. Go home on the basis that we're going to fight we're going to win this battle and we're going to build an entirely new society. And all of us, every single person in this room, has a role in that. When I woke up on Friday and saw the eventual outcome that those exit polls were right, my heart absolutely sank. You know, and people are very, very worried about the future and what's going to happen. But the power of the social movements in Scotland and how we pulled the SNP to the left I mean, they weren't always that social democratic organisation, I think has been really significant and it shows that the social movements can really enact change. The news is revised, the acronyms are reshuffled. Evening Standard banner headlines say UKIP, not BUF. In newsreels, the Union Jacks fade to grey. I was moved to tears to see bearded Orthodox Jews and Irish Catholic Dockers standing up to stop Mosley. I shall never forget that, as long as I live. I love the way in which commentators and experts say the words, the city and the markets. They aren't given to us as groups of people carrying out actions based on self-interest or their desire to finish the day richer than they were the day before. They are talked of as elements of nature, like the wind, or mountains, yet mysteriously and magically endowed with the power of manipulating and determining our standard of living. How much food we eat, or what kind of home or hospital or school we're allowed to have. The city and the markets, we're told, are uneasy about us having too much. And commentators invite us to think that's because some law of nature has been broken. The city and the markets are like the gods in ancient Greece, like Poseidon who was enraged when Odysseus maimed his son and went on taking revenge for years after. Yet the city and the markets are just people who do things like sell each other debts so big they'll never be paid back, or buy promises and guesses that can never materialise. And they don't stop doing what they're doing, even as the great towers and offices they work in 
have to close and thousands lose their jobs. These are our gods. No more dying for the want of the bed And for every family a roof overhead Yes, we stayed afloat in those days of hope We've been dreamers, we've been sufferers Now we were the builders too and everything we were. And David Cameron went to Carlisle Fire Station in the north of England on the eve of the general election in 2010. And he made a commitment in front of those firefighters. Uh, it was on TV as well. And he guaranteed, as he did elsewhere during that election campaign, that there would be no frontline cuts to services, including the fire service. No frontline cuts. And here we are five years later, and in the fire service in England, we've seen 39 fire stations close in those five years. We've seen 5,000 firefighters' jobs slashed, disappeared. Uh, we've seen fire engines decommissioned, left, right and centre. We've seen response times go up as a result of that. We've seen a 20% cut in funding. So it's absolutely disgraceful that effectively he won that election on a fraud because I know that other public services have suffered the same sort of yeah. thing. The government has got this crackpot idea to force every firefighter to serve on the front line until 60 years of age. Uh, I can tell you we haven't had a strike action for a few weeks because we were looking at the outcome of the general election, but take it from me, there's every chance we're going to be calling for strike action in the next couple of weeks. What happened to the days of public servants being heroes? Now they're cut to save, we'll save the banks but not the people. And our dear welfare state is no longer fair or oh, well, uncertainty is rife. All we can do is rebel. We've got more jobs with less hours, less pay and no power Knocking down our council houses to build up an empty palace Where our brothers You know, thinking back to the Second World War it was firefighters standing side by side on the front line when the bombs of the Nazis was raining down. It was that solidarity that defeated fascism. It's that solidarity in this generation, I'm sure, that if we continue to stand together, we can fight the attacks. Yes, and it's the solidarity of everybody in this room and outside who wants to see decent public services, who wants to see peace, who wants to see social justice. It's that solidarity and organisation that will deliver it. In the same way that it was that in 1945 that built that new Jerusalem, it's us that can rebuild that new Jerusalem. Thanks very much indeed, it's a fantastic event. We must stay up alone, cause there's too much power in too few hands. It is ours and we'll take it back. Thank you. The last two days I've been so sad, so sad because I am not in ignorance about what this government has done and what they're planning to do and I hate it and I think it's cruel and absurd. Thank you, but we all do, but yeah. But I, I am in a better position to fight it now than I was five years ago. There'll be loads of people, my generation a bit younger, who were politicised for whatever reason five years ago. For me, it was, I realised that going to Glastonbury is not in itself uh, political activism. <laughs> and that was bad for me, because then I realised I really was doing nothing. Um, so it was really wonderful to be surrounded by people who I knew felt the same way that I did and who wanted to feel hopeful and positive and to celebrate things and to think about the future and, and think about what we can do uh, to counter austerity and to counter conservatives, to counter the lies they tell and to try and make sure that we feel capable of really challenging them and really trying to stop what they're doing. For me, like the, the message of hope is really, really important because what I've learned from five years of uh, this government is that for me I really want over the next five years to take all of my rage and all of my reaction to them and to push it as far as I can into something beneficial and wonderful and different so that in five years time we never have to have another conservative government ever again. Don't burn
burnout. Don't worry if you get too tired to do stuff for a little while. We do what we can while we can, and all of us do it at different times. So when some people feel really down, other people feel really excited. And when some people feel really strong, other people feel like they can't do anything. And it's fine because life is really long. Or life is very short, depending on what I'm trying to manipulate you into doing. <laughs> it has been a real tonic. I think they've got the mix absolutely right. They've had a bit of politics. Uh, a bit of trade unions, they've had some very good comedians and now we're having a band. So I think this is uh, how the left in this country have got it now. It was, really, it was really lovely to be a part of the evening because um, for me well, it was a privilege to see Harry speaking. It, it was vo like fun and wonderful to see Michael Rosen who I've always really loved the work of and really admired. And I just, um, it was really, really important for me, you know, two days after this election when everything still feels so fragile and when everything is so sad, just to remember that there's so much to be hopeful about and happy about and yeah I'm really grateful to the organisers for putting it on because it meant a lot to me.